It's a buzzword, a process of change, used to disguise and excuse at times, but also to contextualize and inform. Constant forward motion means clubs are constantly doing what it describes. So in a way, it's inherently phatic. Manchester United have been doing it for 10 years. Yet for Arsenal, it's a word that defines our contemporary era, rebuild. Since Arsenal's last league title, the competitive landscape in English football has changed forever. Oil-rich clubs, billionaire owners, and an increasing number of clubs with ambitions of grandeur, newly flush with their cut of the billion pound TV deals. Despite the best efforts of FFP, cash and footballing success continue to have a heavy correlation along their respective X and Y axes. You could argue Arsenal have regressed, but in my view, Arsenal have simply stood still. And in football, that's as bad as turning around and running backwards. Focus the lens more closely, and the Cronkies look ready to invest as Arsenal continue their significant period of squad turnover. Come the end of this transfer window, it's plausible that there could be only three players remaining in the squad who are here at the end of the 18-19 campaign. For comparison, at Liverpool, 17 players remain from that time period. Under Mikel Arteta's stewardship, Arsenal look to be finally finding that stability, bedding in the foundations of a team for the long term. But we're not there yet, and how quickly we're running forwards is yet to be determined. So let's get to it. What's on Arsenal's to-do list this summer? Circled in red pen right at the top, incomings. The forward group looks to be an area where Arsenal will focus a significant amount of their investment. And to get where you want to go, you need a group with quality and balance. Currently, Arsenal's attacking group who are under contract of Saka, Martinelli and Smith-Rowe have creativity, enthusiasm and dynamism, but no one who I would call a killer, nor anyone who I would say is physically dominant, among other things. So the qualities I think Arsenal need to add to their attacking group are as follows. A physical presence who can win duels. An aerial threat. Someone with a track record of high chance conversion. Someone adept at dropping deep and linking up. A pressing forward. Someone who can spin off the shoulder of the last man with pace in behind and adaptability to different game states through versatility. Lacazette looks set to leave, but we will retain some of those qualities through Eddie Nketiah, who is set to sign a new deal. Eddie's all-round game has significantly improved. Looking at his per 90 shot, non-penalty, successful press metrics and more, he rarely drops below the 70th or 80th percentile on average and has a significant amount of very high value traits when compared to other forwards in the top 5 leagues. But as the graph says, this is a small sample size. Eddie is the perfect option to add to the group as a rotation option who can also play from the left, but I doubt he's signing a new deal without assurances on his playtime. With no transfer fee to pay, 100k a week for 5 years works out fine, but I personally don't want him playing every week. One to watch. Resigning in Ketia as part of a group makes sense to me, as finding someone who has all of the qualities mentioned is nearly impossible, unless you're looking at the likes of Erling Haaland and Karim Benzema, and there's a number of ways of getting what we will still need on top of Nketiah. We don't really have a precedent for what Arteta would like to do in that forward area, as he's made no forward signings other than Willian, so no signings, and extending Aubameyang's contract. But we do have names. The Athletic recently revealed that Arsenal have a number of possible options at centre-forward. Roma's Tammy Abraham was linked last summer, but Lacazette's situation prevented that deal from happening. Dominic Calvert-Lewin and Alexander Isaac were discussed in January, but Sociedad's unwillingness to negotiate Isaac's release clause may be a barrier, as well as his poor goal record since January, and Calvert-Lewin has had an injury-ridden poor season in an even worse Everton side. Inter Milan's Latara Martinez is of interest, but he signed a new deal in October 2021 and prefers to play in a front two. Other names include Napoli's Victor Osimhen, Sassuolo's Gianluca Scamacca, and 19-year-old Czech forward Adam Hlosek was of interest until his move to Bayer Leverkusen. A graphic from the excellent Aaron Katterson reed at Read the Game on Twitter shows us how they all compare, and Ketia's numbers looking pretty impressive. But according to The Athletic, Gabriel Jesus is Arsenal's number one choice. Arteta has worked with Jesus at Manchester City, and Edu was the Brazil national team's general coordinator when he first received his call-up in September 2016. Pep Guardiola and Tite, Brazil's coach, have both called Gabriel Jesus the best pressing forward in the world. The reports are that the personal terms have been discussed for months now, and all that's left to agree is a fee. However, considering their profiles, Nketiah's new deal may change this. So how do we solve this? You could get a wide forward who has a physical presence and can also play through the middle, someone like Cody Gakpo at PSV Eindhoven as well as a pacey presser like Jesus to layer on top of Nketiah and the rest of the group. You could get a guaranteed aerial threat in Dominic Calvert-Lewin and someone who can drop deep, progress the ball through the thirds and defend from the front, like Lautaro Martinez. 
Victor Osimen is a shot and XG machine, and Ivan Tony, as one person put it on Twitter, is like Harry Kane light, so adept at threading balls through from deep. There's all sorts of possible combinations that could arise, and it's probably not worth speculating on every single one. It's a completely fluid situation with so many variables. It's just clear we need to add those qualities to the group somehow. It's easy to get attached to names like Jesus and convince ourselves that he is the guy and no one else could help us. But trust me, the talent is out there. At this point last summer, Arsenal fans were on their hands and knees for Emiliano Buendia, Yves Bissouma and Andre Anana. Names like Marquinhos, Reese Nelson, Amari Hutchinson and more may yet come into the fold and give us new dynamics. Dare I say, Serge Gnabry. It's a long summer. I'll leave the forward group with this. To be a top club, you have to act like one. Liverpool, Chelsea and City have attacking groups. You're never quite sure who out of Jota, Mane, Salah, Firmino and Diaz is going to play. And they all bring such different qualities to the table giving you a huge palette and array to choose from. That must be at the top of the to-do list. Next, we move to the midfield group, looking to fill the three that Mikel likes to use. Currently, this group consists of Mahmed Elneny, Granit Xhaka, Thomas Partey, Sambi Lekonga, and Martin Odegaard. Assuming Charlie Patino and others in the youth setup aren't quite ready to step up just yet, and that Granit Xhaka stays, that leaves us with a number of possible options. I'm not a fan of the word backup. Might be two words. Signing someone explicitly to be your backup rarely works, as you tank their value, reduce the competitive level, and don't have an adequate replacement when the first choice player needs to come out of your team. You have to layer quality on top. And if you already have an unmovable first choice player, you must sign people who you believe at some point in the future could at least be your first choice player, as we did with Sambi Lekonga. And for two seasons now, Thomas Partey has had to come out of the team for significant stretches in crucial moments of our season. These guys are absolutely vital for us at every phase of the game, and we cannot afford to be without players of quality in those positions. Therefore, I think the midfield needs two additions or layers on top. Yuri Tielemans is the only name who's being significantly linked with Arsenal at the moment in the midfield, and whether he's right or not, his type of profile is the first of the two. Goal threat, progression in our left-hand channel, and possibly someone whose strong foot sees them coming inside to mirror Erdegaard. I've really liked the stability that Xhaka's has brought rolling around into a six at some points in games this season. And personally, I'd look for someone a little bit more robust and athletic than Tielemans. But I have to say I haven't watched much of him and his attacking numbers cannot be ignored. Erdbe Leipzig's Tyler's Conrad Leimer is someone I've been following for a while and looks excellent at both sides of the game. The second type is someone who can sit a bit deeper, progress the ball, intercept and recycle possession. Mikel Arteta might see Mohamed Elneny and Sambi Lekonga as able to job share on this one, but for me, Sambi isn't ready to do that at the highest level yet, and I believe he's more of an eight at this point in his progression. In fact, that's where we saw him on the last day of the season. Elneny has an important squad role in the fact that he can provide respite, especially in early stages of cup competitions for the likes of Thomas Partey, but he's just not good enough for high leverage situations. Arsenal needs someone who can take the load off Partey, as we just can't afford another season without quality in the anchor. In terms of the defensive group, we're looking in pretty good shape. With William Saliba coming back in, our central defensive group is strong. On the exterior, as long as Tomiyasu stays fit, there's no problem there. I've made my position on Tierney clear before. And even if you happen to think he is the perfect fit, unlike me, someone who's missed 48 games for Arsenal since being here is not going to get us to the top level. The early links to Aaron Hickey look good, a two-footed player who could cover both sides and specialises on the left, but I still think we need specialist fullback cover on the right, and I've heard on the grapevine that Cedric may be off to Newcastle this summer. Please, God, be true. Brook Norton Cuffey may be a good internal solution. There's names out there, but nothing concrete. Nuno Tavares, for me, needs a loan, depending on incomings, but he could be a really special player. He's a proper unicorn. He's a bit like Trent. His qualities make him a bit of a unicorn in that position. Finally, the goalkeeping group, and there's nothing to do here. Ramsdale is our certified number one, and I hope he can get back to his best next season, having had a slightly worrying drop-off. Matt Turner seems a strong, ambitious, and intelligent character, and could provide ample competition for Ramsdale, while Arthur Okonkwo continues his development at only 20 years old. And he is massive. Transfers will be the most important and talked about part of this offseason, and we must get our incomings right. On the outgoing side, I'd like to see a shift the likes of Lucas Torreira, Pablo Marie, Hector Bellerin, Bernd Leno, Nicola Pepe, Runar Alex Runa Runas, Alex Alex Runa Runason, and Ainsley Maitland Niles for significant fees. Though it's always difficult with players who clearly aren't valued by their club. However, I don't want to see us in a similar situation that we were this year, where we left our squad unbearably thin in the search of being streamlined. Finally, contracts. 
it is imperative for us to get a new contract sorted for Bakayo Saka. Part of the reason I'm hesitant on the Nketiah deal is because he's getting 100k per week, and in that case, what's Saka worth to us? Regardless, he does deserve financial compensation that relates to his ability and his importance to us on the pitch, and it would be less than ideal to head into the new season with lots of question marks over his future. There's talk of a release clause. Fine, it protects the value, and as I say, talent is out there, tough as it would be to see him go. Gabriel Martinelli, along with his new number 11 shirt, should also be tied down too. More widely, I'd love to see some more experience at the club. I am of the opinion that experience is over-indexed, ultimately talent gets you over the line, but experience can help you when you're one goal or one point away. I'm still of the opinion there's space for some older heads to provide oversights on the football side of things, whether at executive or coaching level, and I'd like to see that reflected on the pitch in terms of the age profiles of the players that we're targeting. Packing out our squad with quality players who are heading into their peak, as opposed to players who are just out of their teens, feels like the next step for this Arsenal side. It's a highly competitive landscape, and the race is never-ending. To catch up, Arsenal have a lot of rebuilding to do. Now, we wait and see.